that simple and small acts of kindness, like changing a roll of toilet paper in the bathroom, <laughs> can be as life-changing as the grand, expensive actions that we think we need to take. Good evening, my name is Linda Cohen, and I am here to share a little bit about my story tonight. It feels very poignant to be here on December 1st, because it's actually been five years today that I lost my father. And I'll use the toilet paper if I need to, if I start crying. My father and I actually did not have a wonderful relationship. That's the truth. We had a difficult relationship. I moved to live with him when I was a teenager. My parents were divorced. And we struggled through the years. And it wasn't until I got the phone call a year before he was dying of lung cancer that I knew a light bulb went off. And I knew something had to shift. This was the only life we were going to have, and this was the only chance we were going to have. And I have to say, that year was magical. Because in that year, we forgave each other. We moved through some of the things we needed to get through. And when he died on December 1st, there was peace in our relationship. And I was ready to move forward. And I was surprised at the grief I really felt when he was gone. For any of you who've lost a parent, you know it's a difficult experience to go through. And I decided to take a spiritual sabbatical. I called it that. I don't know where that came from. But it was time for me to be still and grieve, mourn, do yoga, and be with the small and simple quiet voice in my head. And that simple voice said, do something. And so I took on this project. It was kind of wacky and kind of different and something that I'd never heard of before. I decided I wanted to do a thousand mitzvahs or acts of kindness in my father's memory. And it became the most noteworthy thing I've ever done in my life. How many of you, by a show of hands, know what a mitzvah is? OK, great. So for the rest of you that might not know, a mitzvah in Judaism is a commandment. And Jews are actually commanded to do mitzvahs, or the plural is mitzvot. And we have officially 613 of them. And I decided that I wanted to look at uh, a category of mitzvahs called gimilut chasadim, acts of loving kindness. So I say from the very beginning, none of these thousand mitzvahs were life-changing by themselves. Changing a roll of toilet paper, not necessarily life-changing. But when we were in Spain, my husband and I on a trip, when I was working on the mitzvah project, and I was in the bathroom, and there was no toilet paper, I decided I didn't want to leave that for the next person. So I changed the roll of toilet paper and walked out, and my husband and I had a great conversation about whether that counted as a mitzvah. <laughs> we decided it definitely did. And I remember the first time a friend of mine sent a Facebook note to me to tell me she had changed a roll of toilet paper in my honor. <laughs> there were other simple actions, dropping a change in a canister, a coin canister at a supermarket, giving a book to a friend who was going on a trip that I thought she might enjoy, uh, picking up trash at the, you know, in the park, carrying my recycled bags to the grocery store. Like I said, simple, everyday actions that I bet a lot of you do. Each of you probably does these kinds of things in your daily life. But when I got onto this path and got sort of more active in what I was doing, I started seeing more of these opportunities. They were just around and available. And I was able to jump in and be part of them. And I remember I started the Mitzvah Project, and a friend told me that she'd been at church that weekend. And she had seen an elderly woman who looked sort of distraught. And she'd gone up to her to find out that her the older woman's husband wasn't, wasn't there. And my friend offered her cell phone. I said, call your husband and see if you can reach him. And it turned out he was just stuck in traffic. And my friend told me that she probably would not have offered her cell phone to a stranger. She hadn't known that I was working on this project, because it just was not top of mind for her. And I share these stories with each of you because I know how much this has changed my life. I know how much this has evolved me in terms of looking every day for what the simple actions are that we can do. And I hope by the end of this talk that maybe I will get a little commitment from you that this may be something you'd like to pursue as well. I mentioned to you that this was one of the most noteworthy things I've ever done in my life. And we've talked a little bit tonight about listening to that still small voice. Well, about a year and a half into the project, a rabbi came up to me, my local rabbi. You know you're getting older when your rabbi is 10 years younger than you. So he said, I, I think that this project has really helped you. You've moved through this grief that you felt, and I wonder if you might want to consider writing a book. And I laughed, because I am, don't consider myself a writer. I had journaled in high school, and I had 
kept a blog. I don't think I mentioned that I started a blog to track the thousand mitzvahs. That's how I was able to know when I actually hit the thousand. Uh, but I kind of had that little voice now in my head, a book. Okay, maybe I would think about that. And I did a little research about what you need to do for a nonfiction book and decided that I would step out of my comfort zone and step into some place that felt a little scary and see if there was an interest. And I attended a book writers conference and I got a publisher and I have a new book that just came out in November based on the 1000 Mitzvah Project, how simple acts of kindness can heal, inspire, and change your life. It's been, like I said, the most noteworthy experience that I've ever had. Now last year, I got a great call from a principal in Toronto and he said, Linda, we heard about your Mitzvah Project and about 200 of our children have had a chance to do a similar mitzvah project. Would you be willing to get on a phone call early in the morning and talk to the students to tell them? They had mitzvahs and acts of kindness written on candles. It was the month leading up to Hanukkah. So they had written out what their act of kindness was. He said that the little paper candles were lining their hallways, lining the staircases and lining their auditorium. And would I be willing to get on a Skype call at 5.30 in the morning, West Coast time, and mm -hmm. hop on? I said, absolutely. And I was so excited because now this idea of mitzvahs and being in service to the world was, was spreading. And the same thing will happen if any of you decide that that's something that you may want to consider in taking on. So people have asked me, what, what is the most noteworthy mitzvah that you took on, act of kindness? And the truth is that I never thought about them before they happened. I would just get up in the morning and go about my day. I'm just like you. I'm busy. I'm an entrepreneur. I have children. I have a husband. And I, well, maybe some of you don't have husbands, but uh, you are busy and you're active and you're doing, I'm, I'm looking at the men. I'm sorry. That didn't go over very well. I was thinking, this is not only women here. There are some men in the room. Anyway. Um, I, I, you know, so it was just a matter of, of stepping into, and I'm sure some of you already volunteer. We've heard about that today. We've heard about doing more kindness in the world. We were talking at my table at dinner tonight about letting people in in traffic. I originally come from the East Coast where people don't let you in in traffic, and I live in Portland where people do. But that's just a simple action that you can do, each one of you. And so, again, they're not life-shattering. They're not going to change your life individually, but I think when we get conscious of them, they start showing up, and we start seeing them, and we start noticing them, and it's a very exciting place to be. So I wonder if any of you would think about doing 10 mitzvahs in the next week. Um, and by a show of hand, would any of you be willing to do that? All right. Oh, my gosh. All right, like the whole room is up. Excellent. Simple every day. You leave here tonight. You get up in the morning tomorrow. Push that button. Who talked about the button tonight? Push the mitzvah button as well. Um, and, and remember, act of kindness. It's, it's synonymous. Uh, when I was getting ready for this talk, a mentor of mine and an anonymous donor now, he asked me, do you think you could get people to do 1,000 mitzvahs? Do you think that you could get that group in Denver to commit to doing 1,000 mitzvahs? I don't care if one person raises their hand or if 10 of them decide that they want to do it. I would be willing to give $1,000 to the nonprofit charity of their choice if you can get a group of people. If, not if. I said, I'll do it. I will absolutely do it. So I don't know if one of you wants to cross the sand in the line and join me in doing mitzvahs. My father was my spiritual guide on this journey. He was absolutely with me through this process. In fact, I'll tell you a quick story. My father had a huge beard and was a big man. And before he died, we talked about the fact that I would be looking for signs for him if he was going to come back. Shouldn't have gone here, but it's okay because grief is here and we all move through it. Um, so we talked about if he wanted to come back as an animal, he should come back and I would be looking for that sign. And at his funeral, I saw a black crow uh, flying abl above the synagogue. And I decided that my dad had come back as a bird. He was a black crow. And in the months that passed, I saw crows in my yard. I saw crows when I was at the swimming pool. I heard them. They were calling at me. They would be in the tree. You know, when I told my kids about this, and my son, I remember one time saying, Mom, there's Grandpa. He's calling. And in the end, it really doesn't matter that a crow is this really everyday kind of bird. And maybe it was me making that up. Maybe it was in my imagination that my father was coming back as a crow because it helped me. It helped me through these years when I have been moving through the grief. And so 
I, I wonder if maybe that's, you know, it was something I invented, but it didn't matter because it was part of the healing. So I wonder if any of you want to join me in this idea of individually doing mitzvahs, acts of kindness to make our world better. And in some way, maybe we can encourage corporations, organizations, other places, and other people to consider joining us in some way as we each give or we commit to giving, we can figure out how to monetize that and, and give back to nonprofits in the world. Is there anybody who wants to commit right now to 50 mitzvahs before the end of the year? December 31st is in 30 days. All right, I got a call. Okay, okay, good. Anyone who want to join in? All right, we got more in the yay. <laughs> it's an auction here. Uh, a thousand? Anyone want to commit to me? It might take you two years because I originally thought this project would take me one year. I thought I could do three acts of kindness in a day. When I got to one year, I'd only done 500. And it took me almost two and a half years, and it didn't matter because by that point, I loved it. I didn't want to stop doing it. I still love the giver's high that you get. Thousand mitzvahs going, yes, yes, yes. Talk to me. I'm on, I'm on uh, the internet, 1000mitzvahs.org. You can come. We'll connect. I'd love to be there to help you, each of you. And I, I want to wish each and every one of you, as you walk out of here and you think about this opportunity to do acts of kindness, to do mitzvahs, not to walk past them, not to let them go by. Step in and do them, because I think when we collectively are engaged in them, they shift us. And I want to bless and, each, and, and wish each one of you thousands of mitzvahs in this new year.